Okay, so welcome back. This is part two in our series where we talk about how you can, in C Sharp, run Windows command batch files or script files, including like PowerShell scripts, in your C Sharp application. I encourage you to look at part one where we talk about, first of all, why would you want to do that? What are some examples of why you'd want to run script files or batch files? And we also talked about the basics of Windows Command Prompt and PowerShell scripts and what they are and how you can run them from the Command Prompt or from a PowerShell window. And in this video, we're going to talk about how you can take those basic concepts and bring them into your C Sharp application and develop an application like you see here, which is going to allow you to choose a batch file or a PowerShell script file to run and it will give us, in this case, it will give us some output or it will return some data and we're going to be able to put that data into this text box and it will allow us to get information and also figure out how we can parse the data to get exactly what we want. So here's our application we're going to run. Let me hit this run batch and it's going to allow us to choose a batch file. I've got a DOS script batch file and it tells me first what are the contents of this batch file. You can see the batch file contents is basically two lines. It does WMIC and get some data about our CPU. It says get slash value, which gets a bunch of CPU data and the slash value puts it in a certain format. And then we're going to do WMIC CPU get current voltage which gives us one specific bit of information, which is the current voltage. So it went out and did that and returned, when it said CPU get slash value, it returned under this running batch file, it returned all of this information in this certain format about our CPU. And down at the end, when that was done, it ran the second command, WMIC CPU get current voltage and returned current voltage is 12. So it also ran automatically our Notepad++ with this same output. However, we've got this Notepad++ set up so that it will give us all of the hidden control characters. And to do that, I went to View, Show Symbol, Show All Characters, and this will give us an, a Notepad++ version of that data we got back from those commands, and it will help us in the future to figure out how to parse this text data so that we can extract the information we want. You see, we've got some carriage returns, carriage return line feed. We talked previously about the slash R slash N control characters, which are carriage return line feed. We did a video on that. But this will help us with more information on the data that get, comes back because with different commands, different PowerShell or Windows DOS commands, you get data formatted in different ways. So this will help us to parse that. So this is our application and we'll show you how we can develop this in C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. So let's take a look. So here is our simple application, similar format to what I normally do with my C Sharp applications. And I've got a Form 1 design. I've basically got a text box and two buttons, a run batch and an exit. And if we double click on those two buttons, of course we will get our event handlers, which are button one click, which is the run batch file, and then button exit, which is just application exit. So let's take a look at the basic format of this application. So we've got system diagnostics. We're gonna need that to run the commands that we get in the batch file, system.o to do an open file dialog so the user can tell you what batch file to run and system windows forms. So the properties are basically just setting up the initial directory for the batch file where we want the open file dialog to start and then save file path when we get the data returned from the command, in our case the CPU information, as a string of text we want to save that into our text file that we can then automatically open up in Notepad++ to get better insight into what all the control characters are and so on. And then batch file path, we're going to use that down below. And then file name is command. We talked previously in our other videos about 
using command in order to run some Windows commands, including PowerShell scripts. So very simple properties. And then we do initialize component. And then we have some methods here to do a little bit of work. So batch, get batch file path basically does the open file dialog to get the path to the batch file. Um, we're going to print the batch file contents, whatever it reads. Remember when we ran this, it first told us what the two lines were in the batch file. It put it into our text box, so we're going to do that. Then we're going to run those two commands in our case, run those batch file commands. And as part of that, we have to create an argument. Remember, previously we talked about the argument. We're going to have a command, and then it's going to have a formatted argument based on what we have in our batch file to execute. So we're going to have to create that. It's going to be in the right format. And then parse data is something that we can use once we get the contents returned from whatever our batch file commands were. For example, all of our CPU data in a string, we can then parse that data. Uh, different formats, we can parse it differently, and we'll talk about that later. And this basically runs Notepad++ by giving it the results of all that big string we got from running those batch file commands. And it's going to run Notepad++ using that string file path. So let's take a look. Basically, the open file dialog, pretty straightforward. We talked about this before. Our batch initial directory is where it opens up where our batch files are located. OFD filter batch files, star.bat, or text files, star.text, or all files. And then we get the result from the open file dialog. If it's OK, we just set the batch file path to whatever the user chose. So this is very straightforward. All we're doing is we're getting the path to the file that we want to open. And then what we do is we take that file, the batch file path, we read all lines, doing a file.readAllLines, lines, and we get a string array of the batch contents. In our case, it's only two lines, and it's going to be a string of two elements. So for each string, we're just going to text box one append text with that string. In our case, the two lines showing the two commands, WMIC commands, and then carriage return line feed. And here is where we actually execute them. Now, the first thing we need to do is get that batch file path and create an argument that we can use when running our process. Now, again, I encourage you to look at previous videos where we show you how to do this process start info to tell it we want to run these commands that we are extracting out of this batch file path. So we're going to have to take the arguments from the WMIC commands, extract those, and put it in the right format for this process start command that we're going to do to run them. So we're going to do um, file name is the file name we've already developed, and the argument that we've just parsed out of the commands coming in from the batch file, and that's the argument. Uh, use shell execute equals false. This we've talked about previously. Redirect standard output is true since we're going to get some data back from these commands, like all the CPU info. So we're going to say redirect that to our stream reader. Create no window. We don't want it to run a DOS window when we run this. So we say create no window is true. And then as we did before, we use that process, process start info, doing process.start. And we read in all text from the process with the stream reader. So the process has started, and all of the data we receive from the commands, all the CPU data, is going to go into our process.standard output, and it's going to be a stream reader. And then we're going to read to end all of the data that it sends us, that it got from the commands, and it's going to have one big string with the result, with all the carriage returns and line feeds, and all of the data is going to be one big string which we can then parse. And using that Notepad++, we can see what the characters are and will help us to parse that data. So that's it. We've run it. We've grabbed all the data that has been returned, in our case, all of the CPU data, and then we can parse the data. So we're giving it a string input, which is the entire contents of all the data we've returned. And this method takes one continuous string, which represents an entire set of data returned from running a batch file and parses it. 
and puts the results into the text box. It also saves the raw unparsed input string to a text file which can be loaded in Notepad++ so that the controlled characters can be displayed. This allows the users to get an idea of what characters to use to parse it. The method parses the input string into a string array representing the text split by the CRLF slash R slash N delimiters, assuming the format of all data includes those delimiters as a minimum. This works especially well for a command such as CPU get forward slash value, which we used, which returns the CRLF delimited lines that look like, in our case, address width equals 64 with a CRLF or a slash R slash N. So this is just parsing that as we showed and putting it into the text file. So we're taking that input string and doing a file.writeAll text into our save file path that's going to go into Notepad++. And then we have a input.split using carriage return and line feed or slash r slash n to give us all of the individual lines and then removing all the em empty entries so that we just get all of the values as individual lines. And then for each string in the result lines that we just got, we're going to append that to the text box as we showed. And then to run Notepad++, we give it the file path, and the Notepad path is C program files, in my case, x86, Notepad++, Notepad++.exe, and again, we use process.start, which we've done in previous videos, where you can run a um, executable using that notepad path, which is the executable, and then the file path, which opens up that file that we just saved. So as you can see in the event handlers, it basically goes through and runs that. It gets the batch file path with the open file dialog. It appends to the text box what are the contents of the batch file, and then runs print, print batch file context, which prints, in our case, the two WMIC commands. And then it says textbox1.appendx, it's running the batch file. And then it runs the batch file and prints all of the data, as we just saw, that was parsed, the string array of all the lines. It sends that to the text box. And then it goes through and runs Notepad++ with that save file path. So pretty straightforward um, and really nice way to automatically run whatever batch file you want. You allow the user to select it and it runs it for you, gives you the output, but also gives you a Notepad++ display with all the control characters, all the hidden characters to make it a whole lot easier if you want to further parse this data, depending on what you're getting back. It could be completely different PowerShell data with PowerShell scripts and so on, but this gives you a way to parse all that depending on what you have and what you need to get out of it. So that's about it for this one. Uh, in the next video, we may go into more depth about using the different PowerShell scripts to get certain data from our computer. But if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.